All right, I'm gonna show you my script called Property Controller. And at its base, what it does is that it links properties to a uh, expression control, whether those be slider, checkbox controls, color controls, or angle controls. And these link them to one source layer so you can keep everything at like a null or a control layer. I, I like to use a blank shape layer. Uh, so yeah, it really helps to control a lot of properties at once and it speeds up that process and having to copy and paste to a bunch. So yeah, let's get into it. So here on my screen, you can see this scene here, similar to some other scripts that I've shown. Uh, but we have a variety of shapes, different colors, different sizes, uh, but we have them all named here as well. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch my script UI prop controller. And you can see it says property controller in the UI. And let's just run through the UI real quick. It's, it's pretty straightforward and I have it kind of moving in a process from top down. So here we select our control layer first. So this takes, this is essentially where your expression control will end up being. And it's great because like it'll source every layer that's in the composition, the current composition. So if for some reason I wanted to, I don't know, uh, delete this, I need to refresh my list because uh, when you delete it, it's an After Effects function, not necessarily a scripting function. So cool. Um, I like to add a blank shape layer as you just saw in my timeline. So I'm just gonna use this, click this button here, add control layer and boom, we have a controls layer. It's a blank shape layer, lightweight, and it doesn't have to travel with After Effects like solids and nulls do. It's a lot easier to, um, I guess, not delete it <laughs> that way. So yeah, let's get into it. Uh, cool, so we have a control layer and we have it selected in our drop down here. So I'm gonna focus on the slider value first. So let's see here, I'm gonna select all of my triangles first and I want to control their, uh, let's see opacity, I think would be a good one. So I hit T for opacity on the keyboard. I'm gonna select all these properties and I'm just gonna give this a quick name. Uh, let's see, triangle uh, viz for visibility. And I'm gonna put in a number like, I don't know, 50%. Put a slider, awesome. So as you can see, it linked it, uh, those properties with a, it has a red value now, that means it's linked with an expression. And we added an effect to our control layer, named triangle viz, because we entered that name. And now I can affect these opac this, uh, the opacity property of those layers. Uh, that's great. Now we can like quick uh, do quick experimentation to see what works, what doesn't, and um, awesome, it's cool. So we have those linked, and now let's move on down to the um, um, to the angle control. So I want to let's see, let's do these stars here. I think that'll be a good uh, place to start. I'm going to select all these stars rotation properties. Um, I'm going to leave this blank uh, just to show you what happens when we do leave it blank. So that way. Uh, it's actually a fail safe in case you don't, so it doesn't like screw you up. Um, so I'm gonna put, I don't know, 60 as an angle and boom, it connects the rotation to an angle property or sorry, to an angle control, expression controller. Uh, and it just named the property rotation. So essentially it's just gonna name it based on that property if that field is blank. Um, so if I go up here and rotate, awesome. Obviously this is gonna rotate things all at the same speed and time. You might want to have a few different property, or sorry, like angle controls or rotation controls if you wanted to control different batches of them. Um, awesome. So let's move on again real quickly to these uh, hex values. So this is color, as you can imagine. Um, I want to change the color of my uh, septagons here. Let's see, I'm just going to move uh, septagon here just so it's all in the same hierarchy. These are all green, but maybe I want, I don't know, to be a different color. So I'm gonna search for the color property, just command F in the timeline. And I'm just gonna quickly select all these uh, fill properties, awesome. And let's see, I use the tilde key on the keyboard to maximize the panel that your mouse is hovering over. Um, cool, so actually here, let me just pick a random color, maybe that'll be easier. Cool, so we got, I don't know, this like light blue, I guess it kind of works. It fits the uh, like Rugrats 90s kind of Memphis theme or corporate Memphis. So I have this hex value, cool. I mean, sure, I could go ahead and like copy and paste this color property to, um, uh, to all these others, but there's, I have to, if I wanna update it often, I'm gonna have to like keep on copying and pasting it. So we're gonna link it to a color control. So I'm gonna copy this hex code, right? And then I'm just gonna go through and select all of these color properties, tilde key again to bring down my 
composition window. And let's see, I'm gonna paste it right here. And you can either paste with the like uh, pound sign, hashtag, whatever you wanna call it, uh, or without. It, it's gonna, the code will strip it away. So it just focuses on those six digits. Uh, awesome, so I'm gonna run the color control and boom, they all changed the same color to the same color. And uh, we didn't put an effect name in there. So uh, no worries, it named it Polystar1 because uh, that's like what the, I guess, property group is of it. So we're, we can obviously uh, change this to, what is this, uh, sept color, just to keep everything organized. And as you can see here, if I just change all of these colors, you get to change them all at the same time. Really quick batch changes, which is uh, helpful in like big compositions. And um, let's do this checkbox one for the last one to round it out. Um, see, I'm gonna twirl these up. And maybe I, I'm not sure if I want all of these squares for some reason. Um, so I'm gonna select all of these and I'm gonna twirl down the opacity again, um, the, that property. And so I'm gonna select this one more time. Uh, these opacity, I'm gonna marquee select those. Let's see, I'm gonna name the effect, I don't know, uh, see, uh, square. And let me spell it correctly. See, I'll say square, I'll say checkbox just for demonstration purposes. And you know, we have these values here. So essentially it's gonna write an if else statement. Uh, it's gonna write it in like the ternary operator form. Uh, it's a little bit more, if you're no JavaScript, it's a bit more advanced. Um, in that form, but it makes things a bit more compact. And so, yeah, we just have simple values. You put a number in either of these, and let's see, I want these to be, uh, let's keep it at 100, 100 and zero, because I'm not sure if I want to see these in the end. I'll hit checkbox, and by default, it sets it to the on state that we have it set. And if I hit E and twirl down my effects here, uh, cool. So I can just turn these on and off, and that is like super helpful just for quick. It's like, oh, do I, am I gonna want these on in the end? Maybe not. Uh, awesome. So yeah, and you can link anything with these uh, values here. Um, obviously be careful, like if you try to, uh, you know, try to link a position property with two parameters here, we don't have uh, an effect for that or, or a panel for that. I wanna add that at some point, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, so yeah, if this helps your workflow, I, I hope it does. Uh, let me know if you could see any improvements in it uh, or, if you, um, or if you find it really useful. I love to hear feedback. So yeah, thank you so much and uh, good luck.